This video is going to introduce you to some of the BGP automated configuration capabilities that are present within Viral. We're starting off with a topology that we use in our IGP tutorial with a series of core routers, iOS XR devices in the middle, and then a series of iOS, CSR1000V, and NXOS devices around the edge. We're going to be setting up our core routers, selected here, as route reflectors by choosing the RR route reflector role from the IGP menu under Auto Net Kit properties. So this sets them up each as individual route reflectors. We're now selecting our edge devices and are going to set these up as route reflector clients. So we're going to select each of these and then from the menu, instead of choosing RR, we're choosing RRC, route reflector client. So that's now set. We're now going to break our topology into a series of route reflector clusters. So we're selecting a set of nodes and we're setting a unique value. This could be a string or it could be a numeric value. It just needs to be unique so that we're able to separate out the individual groups. So here you can see we've set one, two, and on this last group of nodes, we're setting the value three. With that now done, we're going to build our configurations and we're going to take a look at the resulting topology. So here we can see the protocol level diagrams. Underneath our topology, we have OSPF, so we can see all the different areas there, highlighted in the different colors. And now we're taking a look at the IBGP view. And by pointing at the various nodes, we can now see their role. Here we can see this device is a route reflector, a route reflector client highlighted there, another route reflector client, and we can see the peering relationships as well being highlighted for us. So as we point at the various connections, we can see the protocol level communication sessions that are established when GB BGP is in operation. Not only are we producing the topology visualizations, but we're actually generating configurations as well. So here we've selected the node, a route reflector, and we can see here in XR syntax, the entries for setting up all the various sessions to our BGP neighbors. This is a route reflector client. So we can see only two sessions being established there. And this device, the NXOS device, again, route reflector client, only the two BGP sessions being established. Now I'm going to make things a little more complicated by adding in hierarchical route reflection. So here we're adding another layer of devices around the edge of our network, wiring them up. The goal is to set this middle layer as the medium route reflectors and the device at the edge is being our right reflector client. So we need to mark these devices appropriately. So we're selecting that set of nodes, highlighted now. We're now selecting from the Auto Net Kit menu, the IBGP role and setting that to HRR, hierarchical route reflector, and setting a cluster value. Okay, so we have a route reflector cluster and an HRR cluster value. And these need to be separate. And then devices out at the edge, these are now our route reflector clients. And again, that unique ID that must match the parent, the HRR. We're now repeating that operation. Again, setting the HRR value and a unique cluster ID. And then selecting our edge devices, setting them as route reflector clients. And again, setting the HRR cluster value. And now our last group, again, setting the value on those middle layer as HRR, setting a cluster ID, and then selecting our edge devices again as route reflector clients with the matching HRR cluster ID. With all of the relevant property values now set, we're able to build our configurations and view the resultant topology diagrams as you can see here. So we have the same physical layout as before. No change in the OSPF. Or is there? Well, we didn't set the OSPF area, so now we get this very strange situation. So we need to actually set these new devices that we've added in and put them into the appropriate OSPF area. So as you can see, we have to add those. It can't guess what the OSPF area value is that we should be setting. So here we are, we're selecting our new layer, those route reflector clients, and putting them into the appropriate OSPF areas.
Now that we've got the OSPF area values corrected, we'll go back, rebuild our configurations, and take a look at the diagram. So as we look at the OSPF view, that's now looking much better. We've got the correct area layouts as we would expect, and as we can see, looking at these nodes, the values are set up appropriately. We can see our BGP view here, and now we're seeing our route reflectors, our HRR, our hierarchical route reflector, and at, out at the edge, our route reflector client. So we've got the appropriate BGP peerings being set up as we would expect. We're now going to split our topology into a series of BGP ASs. By default, all devices are placed into ASN1, as you can see. But well, we now need to split that up. So we're going to select a set of nodes and we're going to set the ASN value, in this case, to 2. Select another group of nodes and set that to ASN 3. Now, are we done? Well, no, because remember, all of the other devices are still sitting in ASN 1, as you can see. So we need to select the entire group that we're going to put into AS and set that value for all of them. So AS 2 and AS3, respectively. And now we can build our configurations. So immediately we can see that the diagram has changed. We're now seeing that these devices are highlighted differently with a different color grouping. That's ASN3, these devices sitting in ASN2. And when we take a look at the OSPF topology, it's now broken up into a series of backbones because these devices are now sitting in different ASs. So there's no OSPF running between the different ASs anymore. When we then take a look at the iBGP sessions, all of the communication sessions in the middle are now gone because these are now changed to eBGP. We still have our route reflectors, our HRR and route reflector clients. And when we take a look at the eBGP sessions, the only sessions of those communicating between the ASs, so just that set of sessions in the middle. We're now going to take a look at the resultant configurations. And here as we take a look, we can see a series of new entries have appeared. We've changed our BGP process ID from 1 to 2, and we now have a series of nail-up routes that are present, as well as all of our eBGP peering sessions that are being established. Similarly, again, a series of nail-up routes. These are automatically summarized. And again, this device is in BGP AS1. And again, we can see the route reflector client and iBGP session peerings.